There we go. Hello, welcome to episode 383 of the Self Help Podcast with me, Ed Lamb, and my good pal, Sean Orford. How are you doing, Sean? I can't believe that we're on episode 383. I know. Well, I was just another little uh, advertisement. I've, I've set up another podcast for my other little biz. Oh, yeah. How's that, how's that go? Oh, it's all right. We've done a pilot episode and we just recorded another one yesterday, which hasn't gone online yet. And I'm going to interview right. someone today in Heswell, actually. Um, about their little local independent business and planning mm. for the future and all that stuff. But I was thinking, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to avoid giving each episode a number at the start. <laughs> Cause, partly because 383 makes me feel really old. And uh, I don't know. If we did it again, do you think we'd, do, we'd, we'd start with all the episode numbers? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the, th the thing that people say is if they want to go back through the archive, um, mm. <clears throat> And there are some people who have actually started at number one and been working their way through. Wow, okay. Yeah. I guess there's I, I need to have a think about that. Maybe I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll think about it. Yeah, it's good, it's good <laughs> fun setting up another show, but it's, it's not the same without you, Sean, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> it could never be. Um, we're, talking about <laughs> we're talking about history today on the show and how you can't change history and kind of that whole looking back side of things. So we'll come on to that shortly. Uh, Livingthepresent.co.uk um, is where you can find all our previous episodes and a blog post which Sean has written for this and every episode prior as well. Uh, and loads of goodies on there as well if you want to sign up for stuff. There is a book, Living the Present too, which you should check out, especially with Christmas approaching. It's not a bad little Christmas stocking filler, is it, Sean? And not at all. Very good. Yeah. Um, how you been? How's life? <clears throat> um, life's been quite tough for me <clears throat> over the last week. Loads of stuff going on. Um, and I don't often feel fatigued. I'm sure a bit of it is kind of COVID left over. Um, but a lot of tough issues to deal with. And so last night I hardly slept. I was, like, I was awake by half three, like wide awake. So I just got up and started writing. So I'm working on, on one of the books that will be coming out next year, you know. Um, so how, uh, what, what, does this, what does a psychotherapist do when, he's, when he's, uh, he or she is a bit overcharged and a bit frazzled? Well, no, normally I do meditation. I'll be playing music. I'll be doing stuff like that. Um, you can meditate in the middle of the night. It's hard to start playing music in the middle of the night. Um, but um, uh, because my mind was very busy, I thought what I'll do is I'll actually use the busyness of my mind. So I put it into the book. So I wrote a couple of chapters in the night, um, which that's, that's like a good processing of energy for me. You know? Yeah. All right. So you're all right. I don't need to come around though, or anything like that. You're... No, 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 no. I'll be okay. It's all right. I'll, I'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm how's how's doing life me. going for you? Apart from the fact you just had a puncture. Yeah, it's just all going on, man. I mean, one of my lads is off school. He's got a bit of a sore neck for some reason. I've got a million and one things to go. I've got another Zoom call in half an hour, so this is going to be a, this is going to be a short, snappy one. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's weird. We're in this we're, in Merseyside. We're in this weird state of semi lockdown. But for me now, like, I mean, the roads are chocker. Everyone's bombing around again. Like, who knows what? Including me. Um, Life's busy again, so it's it's locked down, but without all the nice quiet bits. <laughs> but you you just you just tweeted something dropped down on my feed here about um, electric vehicles being on the increase. Woo, come on! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's double good news for me. So uh, car sales car sales for the year are down massively, like forty percent, which is brilliant because I hate cars. <laughs> but yeah, electric within that, electric cars are on the rise massively too. Like I think they're yeah massively up on in sales and they're uh, i think that if you include hybrids which i don't really that they're, they're selling more than diesels which is cool but yeah mm -hmm. it's going in the right direction hey mm -hmm. like a good nothing like a good crisis to get everyone uh uh into gear is there <laughs> yeah yeah it's good so yeah let's talk about this because you talk about your blog post sean and where did this idea come from about kind of looking um, back? It, it really uh, I'm, I'm working with several couples online at the moment um, and it isn't just couples, it's other, other people as well. But one of the things that seems to come up when people have time to ruminate is they ruminate on the past and then they're coming up with what I would see as kind of like raw and unhealed injuries, you know, emotional injuries from the past. Um, 
And I have actually had people recently have said, you know, working with them as a couple and one said, well, 20 years ago, you, and as though what someone else did 20 years ago was justifying their behavior in the present, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I guess that the, the issue for me is that it's dead easy to go over the past and blame the past for the present. Uh, I did it enough with my dear old dad, you know, um, yeah. uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I see it going on all around us. I see it with things like the Black Lives Matter movement, which is very real, you know, and it is real in the present. But what happened with the empires and the abuse of peoples across the world, which is still going on, whether it's the Rohingya Muslims in, um, in Myanmar or, you know, whatever's going on. Um, the, the idea that groups of human beings exploit and abuse other groups of human beings is very real. And you, you can't belittle that. But also you can't keep blaming for the way things are now. We have to get on with now. We have to get into the now. And one of the things I said in the blog post was it would be quite unfair to go and grab a teenager off the streets of Berlin in Germany and blame them for the Holocaust. Mm. Yeah, uh, but that's the kind of thing that goes goes on is going on. Then, oh, you're German, <laughs> okay. No, um, and at what point do we say, okay, enough is enough, and we actually start to move into the present and start to to live in the present and create tomorrow, rather than keep recreating the past by going on, over and over it. I know. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm a bit of a movie buff, or I like to think I am, and you know. Uh, it's probably not my favourite category of film, but you know I've watched a lot of war movies, you know, as I'm sure many people have. You know, Saving Private Ryan, that kind of thing. Uh, I watched 1917 uh, quite recently as well. And as much as enjoyable as films like that are, um, they kind of they kind of recycle and they kind of bring into the present ideas from you know, particularly if you're looking at World War Two, the idea that the Germans are the enemy. Uh, and I know I know a lot of us don't think that, but I just worry that m movies like that, that that recreate things that happen so vividly um, and accurately uh, from a one from our side, uh, our point of view, how healthy that is, and how that can bring, uh, you know. I, and I appreciate at the same time you've got a balance to decide that history needs to be told and the lessons of of that period need to be remembered so that we don't go down that crazy. Uh, avenue again but yeah, yeah. Andy, what do you think about when you watch films like that or read stories and see well i, I begin to wonder whether we should actually watch them at all you know because mm. i mean part of them is glorifying the badness and part of it is a repetition of the negative you know um the um th there was a case just over the way in in wales in mold of, of a sikh surgeon he was a maxo, maxofacial surgeon who was attacked by a, a right-wing uh, nationalist with a machete in the supermarket because he thought he was a Muslim. The guy was a Sikh. Um, and, uh, and so, like, he attacked him because of all these terrible things that Muslims do. And it's like, yeah. what a ridiculous standpoint. You know, I mean, from any point of view, A, that you could attack another human being like that anyway. But the idea that you can get it so wrong, and the guy was a Sikh, he wasn't even a Muslim, you know. Um, and it, it's that kind of blind, repetitious hatred. And I'm seeing it going on um, as, as much as I get the news feeds from the America and the white supremacists and the Black Lives Matter and the conflicts between the two that are being replayed. And, and I've even seen um, shots of people wearing Ku Klux Klan um memorabilia uniforms and all that kind of stuff um mm. and it's like what is it going to take for people to stop going over the past and to live in the present to live in the moment mm. yeah I, what, is I, it? I, what's the answer what was the what's the conclusion in your blog post that i well, obviously well i mean the, the the conclusion is that that it is it, it's it's only in developing awareness but do, do we have to go because if the choices are we either go through pain or awareness. How much pain are we prepared to put ourselves through to get to the point where we wake up? Yes. 
at the moment we're living through a pandemic which um should should have been predicted you know quite predictable because these things flare up and happen you know with quite quite regular occurrences throughout human history and civilization yep. so but we we'll, we have learned a lot in the last 6 7 months through pain you know and through kind of suffering so why, have, why... have we have we learned that, that's that's well, the kind of a question mark isn't it uh, I, I think some people have learned but some other people have embedded their ideas you know go on then explain that a bit more well i mean I, i'm i'm talking to people that are telling me that, that the fact that people are wearing masks in the street is a way of them whoever they are controlling everybody so people are being kind of systematized and controlled so that they can have their minds taken over. Um, why anybody would want to bother taking over the minds of the human population, I don't know, but uh, apparently there are people out there that want to do this. Um, and the, the idea that there is a them that's out there to get us, you know, and so like, let's build this idea of fear and then let's go back and use examples of things that happened in the past to justify our beliefs now in the moment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, since we last recorded, there has been a development over in the States where a certain individual and a lot of people around him that didn't partic weren't particularly keen on wearing masks and following pro safe protocols when, you know, there's a potentially deadly virus doing the rounds. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's quite philosophically really fascinating that this organism, this virus is, yeah, knocking on doors and trying to find its way into every person it can has made its way into the highest office, you know, in, you know, global power. Uh, but but uh, the conspiracy theorists are telling me that he hasn't got the virus at all. Mm. He's doing this so that he can get the sympathy vote to make sure he gets back into power. And he has, he's not ill at all. He's just going to show himself as someone who suffered, but he overcame it as a hero. Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. And, uh, but I, it, I have seen those, those ideas going, doing the rounds as well on social media, which maybe is, I've got here in my little list, more on the relationship side, which we'll come on to in a bit about how maybe social media isn't such a great uh, tool for human progress, but I wonder. I wonder a hundred years ago or so when the Spanish influenza, not the Spanish flu, influenza was was doing the rounds as well. I wonder what little different sects of the population were talking about, and whether there were people that didn't want to follow best practices. I remember reading. I'll see if I can dig it out. Um, the, the city of Ferrara in Italy, um, kind of a small, smallish city. My brother used to live there when he was a student. Actually, so I've, I've been myself. The, the city of Ferrara reacted differently to a lot of other cities um, in Italy and around Europe and managed to keep the influenza, uh, influenza at, at bay quite amazingly using you know, technology that was available at the time and kind of maths and, and science. Uh, it's a really fascinating case study about how even mm. back then there were people that knew what to do uh, and, how, you know, and there were people that probably knew but refused to just because they thought they'd be all right. <clears throat> Yeah. So yeah, another lesson from history. Yeah, and and that's one of the things, isn't it? If I believe that this is a conspiracy, um, and I can justify that from past events, because everyone, when I talk to these people, they say, "Oh, it's the Rothschilds, and and uh, and and all those people that are controlling the world," um, and this is just another way that they're doing it. Um, but it, it, that, I suppose that that's what I mean about we get this repetitious stuff going over and over again. At what point do we let it go and actually live in the moment? Yeah. So you, you, yeah. you were talking about how you've got some interesting, well, you've always got interesting cases on the go, I'm sure, but mm. um, some couples work at the moment you're doing where yeah. um, people, you know, couples, are, there'll always be relationship issues in the world. And yeah. that's just how it works. But people are ruminating and, and dwelling on things that happened 15, 20 longer years ago? Yeah, I, I, I think that, that people tend to do that anyway, but the, the kind of COVID restrictions that we've got where people have a lot of free time. We say the devil finds work for idle hands. Well, negative um, mind, you know, if, you're, if your mind is empty, 
there's a lot of space for the negativity to grow in there. There are some people that grow the positive, but we have a tendency to grow the negative. So it, it becomes, you know, who can I blame for how I'm feeling? No, no, let, let, let's, let's find anybody to blame, but take responsibility for myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we're seeing it in politics, we're seeing it um, across the board, but we're seeing it, I'm seeing it in, in couples. I, it, it can be there anyway, but it, it's like, what, the, what COVID does is it's like life on steroids. It's like suddenly everything's through a magnifying glass. Everything's got bigger, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I've, there's, a, there's a blog post I want to link to, learning to let go of the past, um, five ways to move on. How easy is it? The first point is about making the decision to let it go. So when you're nudging people in certain directions, I know you can't give them the exact, you tell them what to do exactly. How do you, how do you start to get them to understand that they need to let go of something? Well, the, the, the issue has to be, um, what do people want? Now, many people feel justified in their hurt and, and their angers and all that kind of stuff. And they want to hold on to it like they hold on to a grudge. And it becomes the vendetta that can be passed down from generation to generation. Um, but you, if you get to the point where you decide that you want to let go of all that negativity, you can do it just like that. Yeah, and it is that simple. I can remember saying to one of my teachers, having this conversation with one of my teachers when I was younger, um, and him saying to me, you can dissolve all the negative karmas in your life just like that. And I'm, you know, what are you talking about? And he said, all you have to do is to learn to let go, to forgive and to love people. That's all you've got to do. One of the most difficult things on the planet, actually. Um, but you do, we don't have to hold this stuff. We don't have to hold on to it. You know, it's, it's like, it's a choice. It's a choice to hold on to it. And I, I see people rehearsing that negativity over and over and over again. And it destroys them, it destroys lives, it destroys relationships, it destroys families. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. to people, I mean, they must do because I know examples in, of people I know. People hold on to these things and they, they learn to start to kind of cherish these hurts they have and they hold on to them and kind of cuddle mm -hmm. them and they kind of why is what's what's all that about <laughs> I, I, I think it's it's primarily habit it's habit and programming if you're brought up in a situation by observation you've learned certain behaviors then they become inherent if you never get to the point where you question and reprogram you will always just play out the same program over and over again you know so if, if you live in a family that believes that another ethnic group are all bad or they're all perverts or they're all whatever then you can uh, grow up believing that's that's a fact that's true you know because you've never questioned it yeah um, we've got this weird situation with my youngest lad and i don't know where he's got it from i'm trying to figure it out because uh I'm, I'm certainly not a racist or I, I try not to be um whenever a black person comes on in a film or or on telly he asks he's asked he's starting to ask is this a good a, a, a good a good black person or a bad black person because i think he started to see that some in, in a lot of movies we've been watching that the black the t there must be a tendency for black people to be baddies or the, the in some of the films he's been watching so i'm trying to i'm trying to figure out the most sensitive way of making him letting him know that you know black people aren't inherently bad or, or baddies in real life they're that, just people yeah, they're just people. So it's it's fascinating. Obviously, it's a little bit concerning, and I'm sure he'll grow out of it because I'll make sure he does. But we do pick up these little things, don't we? And they can stay with us for a long, long time. That's like when I was a kid, uh, television was black and white then, um, and you'd have cowboy movies, spaghetti westerns, they'd say. They were shot in Italy. Um, and the, the way it worked was that the baddies always wore black hats and the goodies always wore white hats. And that was how you could tell the difference. You know, now whether that's a reflection of the black and white thing or it was just a good and bad, I don't know. Um, but you'd get to the point where if anyone had a black hat on, ho, 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 look out for them. Yeah. Because you know, that's what the programming became. You know? um, but it's, it's the same everywhere, isn't it? It's, it's like it, if you look at the Israeli-Palestinian issue, 
that can either be seen as a Jewish versus Islam issue, or it's it's a it's two political systems. You know, at what level do you look at it at? But as long as you keep replaying the conflict, it gets bigger. At what point do you stop the conflict? It's the same. It was the same for us between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland. Now, in the main, that stopped. It appears that the antipathy between the two sides is still there, but it's not. In, in the kind of robust outward form that it was before. Um, we, we get it here, don't we? I mean, we live on the Wirral and the other side of the river, 20 minutes away is Liverpool. And a Liverpudlian is known as a Scouser. But if you accuse someone from the Wirral of being a Scouser, they go bonkers. <laughs> you know, How dare you? you know? We get all these weird little tribals. That, I mean, even where you are, you know, you, uh, in, there's Morton and Sorgal Massey, and there, you know, you can, I don't know where the actual boundary is. And the same, even when, I'm in Bevington, so there's higher Bevington and there's lower Bevington. Uh, and there's, which. There's, does does that follow that higher Bevington is posh then, and lower Be Bevington is where the scumbags live? Is that the... <laughs> I wouldn't use that with it. Yeah, basically, that's, that's one way of putting it. But we're in Heswell, which is even more of a kind of a posh area, Lower Heswell is the really posh bit and higher yeah, Upper yeah. Heswell is yeah. less so. Weird little, yeah. weird little yeah. stereotypes that just persist and just kind of going over and round and round in circles. Are we just doomed yeah. or well, how do we, are we just doomed I, to I, kind I, of... We're, we're doomed until we wake up to what we're doing, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and it's only when people do wake up and, and are prepared to examine their own behavior and their own beliefs that something changes. And until you get to that point, nothing does change. You yeah. know, or one of the problems can be that when you're aware of it, but there's nothing you can do about it, all you can do is sit and watch and allow the mad people to be mad, to get on with it and allow them to experience their pain until they get to the point where they are prepared to wake up. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, complicated stuff, this being a human being, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the issue is be here now, be in the moment. What's actually happening today, right now? You know, you and I, I'm sat where somewhere safe, comfortable and warm. You're sat safe, some, somewhere safe, comfortable and warm. Yeah, or we can both be ruminating going, oh, yeah, but. There's a storm yeah. coming, yeah. Yeah, oh, it's going to rain tomorrow. <laughs> Brexit's coming, uh. The second yeah. spike is coming, or maybe it's here. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. forget about all that stuff. Just be in the be in the present, hey. Live in the present. But we we know that if they find a cure for cancer, there's going to be something else comes on that's going to be even worse, don't we? Well, it's just the next next thing in the list. The next <laughs> big hitter in uh, what's killing the most people: um, heart disease or yeah, car crashes. That's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Plastics, that's what's killing everybody. <laughs> yeah, flipping heck. there's a lot of work to do, but I guess I think for, for me, the, the re, you need, we need to realise that uh, there will always be work to do and there'll always be issues to overcome. So, you know, that yeah. we, we did it the other week. Happiness is a journey, not a destination, right? We're always yeah, yeah. going to be on yeah. this journey yeah. to somewhere. Yeah. Do we blame the people that started using fossil fuels to create the Industrial Revolution for the way we are now? Mm. So do we keep looking back and blaming them or do we do something about the problem in the moment? Yeah, well, again, I could talk for that a while. I think Exxon, the big oil company over in America, I mean, they've got documents dating back to the late 70s where they, they knew they had quite accurate projections even then about what would happen and in terms of carbon dioxide uh, release and all oh. that. Uh, they knew, but yeah, how, I mean, but even even now they're not they're not doing much about it to, to solve it. So uh no. If you know about something, and it's it's one thing because you can work towards the solution, isn't it? But if you know, and then you're still being a, a knobhead, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's yeah, different. Yeah. Also, yeah. Um, what's your what's your resource of the week, Sean? I, I'm conscious. Well, both I'm 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 going back to one of my my good sign favourites, which is Urquhart Toll, um, mm -hmm. and it, it's the power of now, and and that really kind of sums it up. It's like. Like you can only really change anything now. You can't change what was and you can't change what will be, but you can moan like hell about anything you want. Mm. Choice. What are you going to do with your okay. life's energy? You know? um, yeah, indeed. All right, mine's a Psych Central article that I'll link to. Um, I'm, I'm letting go. Um, 
quite a snappy little blog post. Um, and we'll leave it there. Sean, you've got okay. a call. I've got a call. You take it easy. You keep again. smiling. Yeah. You too. Live Catch in the present and be positive. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, buddy. See you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.